everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Welcome to Junk Journal Craft Chat, where we are going to have two contests today, two contest winners. One is going to be for the Paper Scrappy Contest winner, and one is going to be for the Fabric Scrappy Contest winner. So I'm going to announce each of those winners, and then if you comment in this video, that will automatically enter you for next week's contests. So that's all you do. That's how you enter. Just con um, Did you see the magic happen with those scissors? That just happened. Um, uh, that'll automatically enter you in the contest. Uh, you are welcome to comment more than once and you're also welcome to comment if you have already won a prize. So there you go. And I'm also going to be answering some of your crafty questions and we're going to, yes, we're going to be doing some altered paper clips because I love to make those, but we're going to do it with a little bit of a different twist today. So um, I'm just removing some of the ones that we have already previously made from my little my little bucket of uh, paper clips here, which suddenly looks like a lot of safety pins in there, but we'll, we'll see what we got. So well organized, Pam, at the paper outpost. Very impressive. Way to go. Did anybody notice I missed cleaning my craft room in January? Yeah, the deep clean? I don't, I, I don't think that happened. I, I don't think it happened this year. I think I just kind of kept on going, pretending like it never needed to be done. It needs to be done. We'll see where that goes. Okay. We can at least admit to it, right? What am I saying? We. I can at least admit to it. <laughs> okay. So, um, the thought with the paper clips today, I've got this bag. It's just full of random items. This is where the um, fundals originated. I, I just would grab random items and put them in a Ziploc bag and then draw from that, pull from those when I was making my journal. So, I'm going to pull from the little things that are in here, the colors and the bits and bobs to build things. I don't know, I just put, pull some stuff out because it's a little hard to get at there. And there's some fun, interesting things here. Like here's an old, uh, this is, I believe, a Russian pin. I bought a bunch of Russian pins once. I thought they were so cool. Um, I don't know if this is actually a Russian pin, but it came in the Russian pin bag. And um, this is an old coin. Well, those are fun. Uh, you know, Me uh, Mexico. It's a Mexican, um, I don't know what it is, peso? I don't have no, I have no idea. It's, it's one of those. Somebody will know what it is. Okay. And um, we're going to be working with index cards today. These are the cheapo El Flimzio ones that you get from the Dollar Tree, uh, which make, I think, is going to make this perfect. So these are, I'm just thinking about how we can use these for um, our little construct here of the paperclip. It just seems like, hmm, it seems to be exactly what we need here. Um, we can fold it this way. We can fold it this way. We can do it all sorts of ways. Well, let's fold it the way we would, the traditional way first. We'll fold it like this. And you can make big altered paper clips. They don't have to be small. Let's make a big one just for fun. All right. These are regular size. I, I just call them standard, but I'll get the official measurement here. These are uh, 1.25 uh, inch paper clips in case somebody needs to know. And I reloaded my um, glue. This is Scott. It's not Scott's Creek. It's a uh, Fabrifix. Yeah, there we go. It's one of the two, right? That's what she primarily works with. Okay. And I always, not always, I, I try and put the little loop on the inside. That gives me a bigger grabber on the outside. Now I just got glue all over my fingers. Well, I'm just going in. I'm going to have, I'm going to have gluey fingers and then I'm going to seal it. And there's our base. And now to get rid of the gluey fingers, it's great to have a little baby wipe thing next to you because when the glue is not all yucky and I mean not all dry and everything, it's easy to remove with the baby wipe. They have some type of solvent in it that helps dissolve the glue. I know it comes right off. So that, that does make life easier um, just in case. Uh, you could also use a dishcloth with some uh, dish soap on it or regular hand soap, something like that. Okay, so we have a nice little base. Let's make a little cute, um, let's make a cutie little uh, altered paper clip. Oh, this is cool. I got a bunch of these, uh, this came in a whole Rolodex full of it must have been belonged to a bartender who was studying because it had all these drink recipes. Now I don't I don't drink, but I do find them interesting to see what goes in them. So maybe I'm just gonna glue that right on there. I mean there's really no rhyme or reason or rules or anything. It's just play and um, play some more. That's it. Just play and then play some more. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I think that's kinda cool. Let me get a pencil. And maybe just to oh, you're kinda far. Well, that's a little close now, isn't it? But that's all right. We can do that. I'm just going to emphasize the shape of the little Rolodex thingies in here because I just, I don't know. I just think it looks kind of neat. And then 
okay, if I was organized, I'd have a Q-tip. Do I have a Q-tip? No, nowhere, nowhere. Like a thousand behind me, but none right here, so I'm going to use my finger. That was water. Here's the finger paintbrush to dissolve the graphite. What was that? That was an Aquarelle, in case you got to know, Aquarellable Stabilo Pencil 8046. Huh. I was always calling it Aquarelle. It's an aqua. Blah, 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 blah. It was. It's an aqua. This is not easy. Aquarellable. Aquarellable. Yeah. Great name. <laughs> okay. So got a little that going there. That's kind of cute, right? And um, let's see what else we got. We're gonna get our our daubers out. This is a little close. Um, there we go. Daubers. 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 Okay. And um, here's my brown, my faithful brown. Now we're gonna go. We're gonna go hog wild and do something different. We're going for a different color. I got blue here. Can I find my blue dauber? Oh, blue dauber. Here you are. Broken china. Distress ink. Blue blobber. Blue blue blobber. Going around. Yes, yes. I had coffee. Yes, yes. I did. <laughs> All right. There you go. Uh huh. Kind of cute, huh? I don't know. I like it. It's uh, something unexpected, something different. So I just want to show you that you can really do anything. So maybe this person, after they had their drink, might need to call for a ride. So let's just let's give them a, a phone dialer. So this was from back in the day when there was there was rotary dial. Who who remembers rotary dial? I do. I do. Yeah, born during that era. Um, there. Just I don't know. I want to put some fun on it. It's kind of fun. So, and then you clip it, and I, I just call that done. That's done for me. Uh, you can keep going. You can make these as dramatic or as simplistic as you like. It's all good. Put this in the done pile. All right, so <clears throat> let's a ask a question. Let's see what you guys are thinking. Here's one by Bernadette Gaspard Mills. Um, this one just came in. It said, uh, hello, Pam and Menagerie. I have seen some beautiful artistic edge punches in several videos. Do you know how uh, to do... Do you know how to do this without owning a decorative paper edge? Yes, there's a couple of ideas that just quickly come to mind. Um, number one is you can always tear. Don't forget about tearing. Hand tearing makes beautiful decorative edges and then you can ink the tears and the, the little fibers will wick up the ink very nicely and give you a beautiful, that's a, I, I think a true deckled edge. I, I looked up deckle the other day now I can't remember for the life of me what the word deckle means. Um, uh, I forget. But um, if you don't have those deck, I think she's thinking of maybe these. These are not expensive, but you can get them in all sorts of different edgings. But I have had people take a plastic ruler and they'll take a pair of pliers and they'll break the long edge of the plastic ruler so it has a jagged edge. And then they'll push that down and they'll tear paper against it and you'll get a specific pattern from the specific bites that you took out of the, um, the ruler. And uh, so I have seen that work. Uh, I've seen it mostly used with the plastic because often the wooden rulers have a piece of metal there and it's kind of hard to break those unless you get a wooden ruler that doesn't have that piece of metal there, then maybe you can do it. Um, but really anything with a flat edge that you can break along the edge and then if it's stiff enough and then you can tear will work. But the ruler seems to be the go-to thing. If you've got any other ideas, people, every, everybody feel free to add them down below. I'm sure there's a million that, that I forgot about. Okay, so we got that one. Uh, 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 oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> That's very funny. Okie dokie. Okay, Gretchen Lomadu, your little puppy is adorable. Do you still have your birds? Yes. Yes, I still have my birds. They are twittering. Well, they are not twittering at the moment. Um, I just, it just depends. Oh, I just heard a twitter. Did you hear that? Maybe it was too quiet, but somebody just made a noise. There was a tweet and um, uh, that, there's one. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Right on cue. And uh, there, yes, birds are present. Uh, Terry Rowe, recent trip to Goodwill find vintage zippers, tan ones in their yellow package. What, what to use for? Belly bands? Uh, oh, that would be cool. What a great idea. Um, uh, you could also put them on the covers. I, yeah, I've, you know, honestly, I've got a whole drawer full of zippers and I'm kind of wondering, I forgot about them. But we should think about what we can do with zippers. Uh, I think you could actually make like a pocket that would open with a zipper inside or on the back, or on the inside cover, or something like that. That would be cool, too, for those, those sewing people that can do that sort of thing. Um, uh, or you could use, 
uh, maybe take the zipper apart in two pieces and use one piece of it as edging, maybe on the spine or on a page. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me play with some zippers and maybe come up with some real ideas for you. Um, I, I, I literally do have a drawer full of zippers. So yeah, I thought I needed a million. I was on this rampage to make totes. You know, I was making totes uh, to put my journals in and things like that. And I was having a lot of fun and trying to learn how to master the, the art of zipper. Never totally mastered it, but came, like, not came close. But uh, I, I figured out ways to get zippers in there. And they're actually pretty fun, but apparently I wasn't going to make a thousand of them. I was just going to play with it and learn the skill and then have a bunch. And apparently I was good with that and moved on to something else. Um, okay, Norma Favela asks, Good morning, Pam. Love the journal. Love the things you added. What is pickleball? Oh, it's like mini tennis. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, Nikki, I'm sure you've already answered this, but where do you get your ephemera? Yes, yes, I've answered that, but I will, I'll give you the quick rundown. Um, self, friends, family, garage sales, yard sales, antique malls, consignment shops, flea markets, auctions, Etsy, eBay, Craigslist, Facebook, Marketplace. Um, there we go. And Carla's Bunny Trail asks, I was wondering where you got all your ledgers and papers from funerals homes and things like that. Those were rare finds that I just came across at random, different places, unsuspecting, and there they were. Um, some were from people who I've made connections with who are knowing the things that I'm looking for and um, things like that. So I would just say keep looking and keep asking because... Um, they're not that common, but you will find them. So there you go. That's my best answer for that. Cause they're, they are everywhere. A lot of people die. There's a lot of records and, um, they're out there to be, uh, um, you know, researched again and learn from. We can learn a lot from those. Um, boy, a lot of people want to know, where do I get all my old papers? Okay. I need to get to a different question. Um, oh, okay. I think I did that. Okay. I answered some questions. Okay, the other day, and I forgot to heart them. So I'm just going to breeze through these. Whoop. Hang on. Okay, I've found a question here uh, that has not been answered. Katie D asks, Hi, I have a question. I have old tickets from concerts or sport events from the 2000s where it looks like they might fade. What do you think is the best way to preserve them? Like, should I laminate them or coat them with Mod Podge? They are mine. I would love to put them in my journals. Uh, they do have archival sealant sprays that you can buy. Um, laminating would be another good idea. Mod Podge might yellow over time. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but also just keeping them in the dark. I think a lot of the lightning effect comes from the, the, these things, paper objects being exposed to light. You know how sometimes when you have a piece of paper across another piece of paper and then 100 years later it gets moved, there's a line. I think it's the light, not sure. Um, but those, I would say, would be good ways. Um, Della Murphy's, I'm not a truly an arch archivist or archivalist. I'm more of a, let's put it in there and hope nothing bad happens to it in a hundred years kind of gal. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I'll be gone. <laughs> okay. Um, any idea? Okay. Just me, Valerie asks, any, I, any ideas for ways to use wax seals beyond sealing envelopes? I have a plenty of wax and a couple of stamps would love to have alternative uses. I think you could use them as, uh, if you do them thinly, as decorations on pages. Um, you could make, uh, you could put them on bookmarks or um, on, um, let's see, I mean, obviously pockets and tucks and things like that. Um, maybe, I don't know, because they might be crumbly. You want to be careful. It has to be something that's solid, that's going to take impact and not be bent. So you know, bent, like flipping of pages. Pages can sometimes be straight, but if there's like a bend, it might crack. So I would say maybe something that stands on its own, like a bookmark that's hard, um, might work well. But, you know, let me think on that. I gotta think some more. I don't know, because uh, they might be crumbly. Um, Christine Cross, good morning, Pam and Sunny and the crew. Love this idea, but I've got an episode that feeds from the top. Will it work? Do you know, please? I have no idea. I don't know what feeds from the top means. If the paper is going to go down and turn, not good. Okay. If the paper somehow goes straight through, better. Okay. Because um, then it, less jamming. That's what you want is less jam, fewer jams. Less jamming, fewer jams. I know that's weird, isn't it? Um, but yes, 
as long as the paper doesn't want to roll around a barrel, you know what I mean? I think you're going to have a better experience. I, I don't know if that helped, but that's my two cents. Um, Lily Fultz. Where are we time was? Okay. Lily Fultz says, uh, do you have, a, you have an amazing craft room with some awesome furnishings and crafty items, but why not move, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting decorating tips here. Why not move those taller pieces of furniture over to where all of those shorter carts and drawers are for, uh, and move those shorter carts <laughs> with the drawers over to where the taller pieces are of furniture. So the way you will have more beautiful natural light coming in from all of those awesome windows that are being blocked by the taller pieces of furniture. Anyway, really enjoy your stuff. Well, thank you, Lily. A great suggestion. And here's why. Um, the entrance to the room would show, if I did it your way, you would look into the room and see a pile of plastic drawers under my window. And I just think it looks ugly. And I thought the wooden furniture looks nice. Honestly, it looks like <laughs> it looks like a craft bomb went off in this room. Who are we kidding? Um, I don't know why I'm trying to pretend like it looks nicer this way. But also at night when I'm crafting here, because sometimes I, I have, um, it's a little hard for me to always open and close my blinds because of my tall wooden furniture that's in the way. I can't always get to that little thingy thing. Um, but I do, I, I have shutters that can come down and they will close the light completely. But if I'm in here crafting at night, Anybody walking by, it looks like I'm in here crafting at night, so that's kind of weird. So, so I am kind of trying to minimize the amount of exposure, but still receive light. So I have this screen in front of me. It's like one of those divider screens, so it light flows through. I have blinds that can be open and closed, and then I have shutters that can go up and down on the outside. And um, it's like a tomb. And uh, <laughs> I have a, a window on the side of me here that I do, I actually open that one up for light because it gives me a lot of light over here. Uh, natural light is wonderful to craft by, to video by, and every, everything just looks nicer in natural light. Now, not intense bright sunlight, uh, um, direct, like subdued, like as if you were under a porch and you were just getting the, the afterglow of the light, like not the direct light. Yes. Okay. There's another two cents worth of nothing. Okay. Um, why don't we do, no, we'll, we'll do the two drawings at the same time because I have to move my computer and it's, it's a little awkward. Why don't we make another paper clip? You, you made one, Pam, way to go. Okay, we're going to, we're going to fold this one in half like this just to see what happens. Never done this. Going hog wild here. Alrighty, off the map. Fold it, probably not straight or even. That's okay. We can get two out of this. You could do a long one, but yeah, I'm not going to do a long one today. No, two little ones. And how are we going to glue this one? Let's see. You can even put your paper clip in first, which is not a bad idea, okay? After doing a million of these, if you put your paper cl clip in first and then put the glue down, you're not trying to, you know, get the paper clip on with your fingers and then getting all that glue in there, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I probably do it both ways a thousand times without even thinking about it, but I can see the logic in doing it this way. It's kind of makes sense, I think. Less glue. Okay. Yeah, I just reloaded this with Fabrifix glue. Uh, clear silicone glue. Fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. I know you guys always hear me say that, but everybody asks, so that's why I, I just say it. Just save you the time typing the question. What glue? What glue? <laughs> All right. There you go. And so we have our bases. They come together really fast. See that? And let's see if we could do something different with these. Um, she's reaching. She's going for it. Looking for her corner. Oh, I know what I want to show you. Somebody was really nice. They sent me this. Okay, I want to show you that. Because it answered a question that I put out there into the world. And somebody came through with an answer. And I really appreciate it. They took the time to actually mail me the examples so that I could fully feel the experience. And I want to share it with you. Okay, so here was the deal. I had these cards. Wait, let me get the blank one. Okay, so this is the blank card that I originally had. It's a type of library card. Keep this card in the book pocket. Book is due on the date, late, latest date stamped. Okay. Uh, I saw your video where you had the blank library cards. Those are the type they now use. I have enclosed a few used ones for you. Also, please note they have a thin metal aluminum, I think, between the paper to make them sturdy, which I think I can feel. Oh yeah, I, think, I don't know if I can see it, but I think I can feel it. Any hoots, that's all. Happy artin'. Um, so that was very nice. And she sent me these. Now these, I guess, she stamped or they, they were stamped or used from old books. I don't know. But um, apparently that's, that's, these are library cards now, like I guess return cards or things like that. Maybe they don't, nobody signs them anymore. Ah, or this is just when it's due back. Maybe they don't need you to sign it anymore. Maybe they feel it, they shouldn't 
let your signature be copied or something like that? Does anybody know? Like, why did they convert to this? What is this all about? What happened to, hang on. I cannot put my hand on a signature written high library card for life of me. I know they're right over there in the wooden drawers and I could reach three of the doors and I ferreted nothing. Okay, I know I have them. I just don't know where they are, but I know I would know where they are if I had done my deep clean because I would know exactly where they are then, but no, you didn't do your deep clean, did you? No, look how you're paying for it now. This is what happens when you slack off, sister. <sighs> okay, let's answer. Well, oh no, where, where are we at? What's that? Okay, um, let's answer some more questions. Okay, did we make? No, we just made these. Let's go back here. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, well, maybe we'll use some decorative scissors on this one. Let's see what's edge. Oh, no, I just took off what I did. That's all right. I'll just leave this one like this. Maybe we'll use paint and pink. Let's see. Oh. How about pink, purple, pink? I have pink dauber in my hand. This is worn lipstick, one of my favorite pinks. Okay. It's a little dry. Probably need some water. That's okay. We'll just give it a little base. A little base coat. Oh, I need more water. Come on. <laughs> just plain water in here. Um, and then they just come to life when you wet them up a little bit. So there you go. Mine are mostly dry. That's what it is. There's still tons of ink in them. They do hold a lot of ink, these ink pads, so it'll be a while before you actually have to replace one. I mean, all the crafting I've been doing, I, I mean, I just re use the re-anchors, you know, the little bottles that you can squirt, squirt, squirt. Apparently five, five big squirts, flood it, let it sit, and then come back and start using it like you always did. I mean, that's, that's my approach. Okay, so these are cute, I like that. I think I'd like to glue this on here and just kind of do something like that, like something odd and unexpected. Let me come a little closer. Um, here's a pet. Oh, here's, no, here's a, what are you? You are a coin from Mexico. Let me put you on this side. That's really pretty. Um, uh, and I don't, I think, if, I don't know. Do they still use these? I don't know. It's going to take a second to dry, but it's okay. We'll put you on there. That's kind of neat find. We'll put something like that. Maybe I'll like under slip you there. So a ticket. Maybe this is, they had a little money and they went to a show. And there you go. And that's the story of how that went. Oh, it was the, and it was the Grand op oh, it was the Grand Opera House. November, oh, November 23rd, that's our anniversary. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, there you go. Um, done. Yeah, I mean, so it doesn't have to be much, you know what I mean? You can just, like, a little, and you go. A little, and you go. Now, now I am, like, whipping along here at, at breakneck speed, making a total of two with you guys. But, um, you know, that's the way it just goes sometimes. Let's make one more. I can at least impress you with something. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No signatures. But this was the be the old fashioned signature card, but apparently nobody took out the book called Homeless in America. What's the matter with everybody? Oh, oh this is pretty. Oh yeah, I love this. This is a, a, a glue in my hand. Victorian scrap. That's a Victorian. Oh, that would look really pretty on there. Maybe I'll oh it's this way. Perfect. Look, that's gonna go great on there. Look how pretty that Dunsies. This is amazing. That's a real treasure. Um, sometimes it's hard to decide whether to glue these down or not, but you know, they glued them black, back down in the Victorian days. So I'm gonna go with uh, the custom of the day and glue this little guy down. Yeah, cause I think it's really pretty and the color is perfect. Okay. Hmm, I should, I have some Victorian scraps. I should share some with you with the next bonus special or something like that. That would be, that would be fun. Okay. Next question. What do we got? Okay, so this is what we made so far. I'm so embarrassed. I've like done nothing. <laughs> I'm just goofing off with you guys today. Um, okay, so we've made these. <laughs> and um, let's get another question. Hey, Pam, I've got a question for you. How long have you been a collector and how did you get started collecting vintage stuff? That sounds vaguely familiar. Um, okay. Uh, I've been a collector, um, I would say of the true ephemera probably around 2016 no 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 it's been longer than that um gosh i don't where do you call the dividing line i remember watching a video being fascinated by some woman who had a i think it was luna rosa she had a real handwritten letter in her junk journal and i thought that was so amazing i was just floored i was gobsmacked i was like you know you know, dazed and confused and just loving the idea of that. And that's when I started a real search for old papers. And I don't remember the actual date. Um, sometime in the last, before the turn of the century of 2000, I could say. But not 100% sure. Um, but I think 2015 would be a good guess. And 
How did you get started collecting vintage stuff? I mean, that was really the, the trigger. Um, I liked that style. I liked looking at the old pieces. Like, here's an old milk top, topper top thing. I just think that's kind of cool. It's just really, look at Krimco. Probst Milk Company Krim Krimco. Yeah, Krim Company. Like, I guess Cream Company or something. <gasps> chocolate flavored. Ugh, chocolate milk. Oh, okay. There was always this decision you had to make in school when the, like it was lunch and, and we had to collect milk money and you could get chocolate or regular milk. And frankly, I could never understand why anybody would pick regular milk over chocolate milk. I mean, to me, it was such an easy, it was my easiest decision in my life ever because creamy, rich chocolate milk. And there was only whole milk back then because we were all trying to, you know, raise chubby little kids or something like that but we all had whole milk chocolate milk and it was so rich and creamy and there was the odd kid who had had white milk and um never trusted him <laughs> no, i don't know uh, <laughs> i know i know some people actually like milk regular milk yeah no i have i have i have a cousin who she loves drinking milk i just think it's weird um <laughs> i do <laughs> when you can have chocolate okay um what is the idea? Okay, Susan Hurd, Duchess of Cadished, asks, what is the idea and purpose of a junk journal? Okay, I would say a, a junk journal is a form of art. I'm going to give you the, the, the quickie explanation for fun and play. The longer explanation is, what is the purpose of hanging a piece of art on the wall and looking at it every time you walk by a thousand times? There's no real purpose. What we're really trying to do is evoke an emotion or an experience or an inspiration or a thought or move us in some way, shape, or form, whether it's the creator of the object or the uh, receiver of the object. doesn't matter. Um, also, um, it can be a place to catalog things, memories, quotes, poems, recipes, dreams, art, doodles, um, memorabilia, whatever, whatever it is you'd like to save and treasure. It can be a place for you to journal. It can be a place for you to write, um, to express yourself. It can be a place to give somebody like a theme journal of something they like. Maybe somebody likes uh, classic cars and you could make a classic car journal, something like that. Um, that's a big question, a very big question. Um, Pugy, Pugy says, aren't you an hour earlier? Well, I, was that on uh, the, the day the time changed? Maybe you got up late because the time changed. I'm still at 7 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Eastern time, unless I posted the wrong time, which can happen. It can happen. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I post at 7 p.m. instead of 7 a.m. because I just have one of those moments. You know what I mean? One of those moments. Oh, it's at the 28 mark so we need to do our contest winners okay so let us do this we clear the deck so i can pull over here's how we clean the desk there it goes nice and clean look at that spotless <laughs> okay let me hang on let me rearrange things okay i'm back the first one is for the scrappy fabric contest who is it it's Gigi. Gigi poke Yay! Yay! This is my first Friday watch. I really enjoyed it. Congratulations, Gigi. See, anybody can win here. You just never know. So you, uh, Gigi Poke, you won the fabric scrappy contest. And that means if you contact me via et, uh, via my email, which is, where is that card? It's right here. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, got it. Pam at thepaperoutpost.com. Email me that you won the, the fabric contest by next Thursday and then give me your name and mailing address and I will mail you your prize. That's all you do. Okay, now we are going to, what are we going to do? We're going to pick another winner. Okay, I can't, why is nothing moving here? Okay, I have my mouse. Looking to pick another winner here. And now we're going to do the paper scrappy contest. See who wins here. Da, 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 da. Brenda Clark, also known as The Simple Crafter. Congratulations, Brenda. Same thing goes for you. Contact me at pamatthepaperoutpost.com. My email address. Send me your name and mailing address, and I will mail you your prize. Way to go. I have somebody here who would like to say a few words. He ha Do you have a... Um, uh, is it, what is it? A, is it a pup date, or is it a public service announcement? Oh, it's a pup date? Okay. Pup date, pup date, pup, pup date. Okay. Coming in. All right, here. Hello, everybody, sunshine. 
Um, I have a pup date. <coughs> okay, let me get organized. Okay, so my pup date. <coughs> Mom, can you work on the voice, please? You're a little scratchy. Okay. <coughs> okay. Oh, hey, everybody. Oh. <laughs> ah, you sound funny today. My pup date is as follows. Yeah, are you done? Yeah, I'm ready. I need to go ahead, Mom. Just right here waiting for you. Um... Mom trimmed my eyes today, like the hair around my eyes. I don't really like that at all, but there's treats involved. So, well, let me just say, uh, let me just say, I really like the treats, so I dealt with it. There's some things in life you just gotta deal with to get your treats, you know what I mean? <laughs> And that's one of them. Well, there's two, because there's two eyes. So there was a lot of snip, snip, snip. And mom, like, holding my head. And I wiggled. And then she'd have to rearrange me. And then she, like, like, it was like she was like, I, I was like a football in her arms. And she had me. And we were running, running across the field. And, and well, she didn't throw me. But I felt like I, I couldn't get away. <laughs> I, I tried. And I just, I couldn't get away. And... She got me. Yep, yep, I got my eyes trimmed. But I got my treats, so it was all worth it. So you go get yours. <laughs> if you have to get your eyes trimmed. Okay, I don't think they have to get their eyes trimmed. Oh, huh. Oh, well, that's all I got then. Happy crafting. Okay, thank you, Sunshine. <laughs> you just never know where the day is going to go. Oh, my gosh. Okay, thank you very much for watching, for those of you who are new. Um, my videos do come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, if you're interested, sign up for my free um, monthly email newsletter. All my links are down below in the drop-down description box below the video. Um, you can get a, a free digital image emailed to you every month, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, and page list of ideas if you're having a, a hard time breaking a blank page, a whole bunch of things. All at the very, very bottom. Scroll all the way down, and it is in the freebie section. Uh, you're also going to get junk journal tips, updates from me, and um, peeks at new digi kits coming out, and plus other things as they come along. And um, I have an Etsy shop where I sell journals and bundles and kits when they are available. I don't always make announcements, but... Um, you might just drive by there and look because you might find something strangely for sale, which was not announced. I like to do that every once in a while. It's fun. And um, I sell DigiKits, which are printable, downloadable images. They come in five pages of themed items like birds, butterflies, dragonflies, um, Victorian, a whole plethora of things. Uh, I sell fundals, which are the collections of old and interesting papers, unique items that you might like to add to your junk journal. I, I do 100 plus pieces of things and um, I mail those off to you and that includes free priority rate shipping um, that goes along with that. That is included and I have a print and mail service. So if you like the idea of the digi kits, you would like, they look like this. Here's just an example. Um, they come on lightweight cardstock. And uh, they've come printed out, and then they're easy to cut out. You can cut them out and use them as journal cards and tucks and belly bands and things like that. But um, if you like that idea, but you don't have a printer or don't want to print, I will print them out for you. All you need to do is buy the print and mail option. You don't need to buy all the individual digi kits. Just buy the print and mail option, and then send me a list of the 10 digi kits that you want. That'll get you 50 printed pages on lightweight cardstock, and free priority shipping is included with the price. And uh, that's available in my Etsy shop. Um, you can either email me your list to pam at the paper outpost.com or message me through Etsy message. And it's a little easier actually through Etsy message for me because uh, it's all just right there. But it, I, either way is fine. It just sometimes takes me a little longer to get to my email. Um, what else? That's that. I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies that you see me use here, uh, if I can find a link for it, I will put it in the Amazon shop. That does help my shop, but you do not pay more for those items by using my links. So thank you for everyone who uses the links. I have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything as a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, zip toady, sweatshirt, mug, tote, or water bottle. And you can find me on in, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group, the Paper Outpost Pace Facebook group. We're having a good time over there doing weekly and monthly challenges as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. Now, remember most of all that fun, where's my, I already lost them. Fun can be simple. So you get out there and you create with reckless abandon, okay? That's the message of the day. 
Take care, everyone. Have a great time, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.